Hello viewers, Kyle McCoy here, and thank you for tuning in to another Shop Talk. I did not expect to do another one of these so soon, but you guys sent in so many great questions, and a lot of them, and I really wanted to address some, and also I want to fill you guys in on some things that have been going on here in the studio, so stay tuned to the end of this video, I want to give you guys some sneak peeks on some projects I've been working on, but for now, let's get to the questions. What's your video making process? Great question. The first step, of course, is coming up with the design of the art piece. I typically make two of each one. That's one for me to learn and one for me to teach. Uh, you see, the first one gives me a lot of time to experiment, I try out some different patterns, and the second one is the one that I actually record for you guys. Uh, so that way, I really know what I'm doing and I can give you the proper step-by-step -step instructions pretty quickly. And then I'll put my script together, which is when I try to decide what it is I want to say about this work or the subject matter. I always have a lot of fun with this part, as I'm sure you've seen. I try to balance things like trivia, uh, background information, or maybe you learned something you didn't know before, that's always nice. Or even sometimes I get personal and talk about what this thing means to me or my experience growing up with it. And then sometimes we can just be really silly and host a fake cooking show or quote American Psycho. And they should, because it's not just about aggressive consumerism and the importance of brands, it's also an exercise in control reflecting the theme of the film itself. After I shoot everything on camera, I am just glued to my computer in Final Cut Pro. I always love having new footage to play with in editing. After I finish an episode, I always leave it for a couple of days, and then I'll come back and watch it, and then I'll see some changes that I wouldn't have noticed before. I'll really try to fine-tune everything, polish it up before I release it to you guys. And that is just the opposite compared to doing these Shop Talk videos. Even at this moment, it's so relaxing compared to the, all the work that goes into the Pixel Art Show. Like, I'm filming this video right now on Tuesday morning, and I plan on releasing it this afternoon. So, completely different process for sure. Do you ever use other fuse bead brands? Negative. Although when I was first getting into the craft, I tried everything. Hama, Navi, Perler, everything. Obviously I wanted to have the best uh, color palette that was available to me. But over the years, I found that mixing brands can kind of become unpredictable in the ironing process. Different brands just melt differently a lot of the time, and that's not necessarily even a bad thing because you can use it to your advantage. You can give your work kind of a texture. That's what I tried to do on this basketball in the New York Knicks logo. You see what I mean there? I experimented with that stuff for a while, but now I just stick with Perler 100%. Um, I find they have the best color selection, the best fusing consistency. You get a nice smooth finish. I am all Perler all the time here. Are your videos sponsored by Perler? Well, coming off that last question, I sure talk like I am sometimes, but no, these videos, they're just 100% me goofing around in my studio here. I have been commissioned by the Perler Beat Company to make some projects for them, uh, the same as with any other buyer commissioning or requesting a project. I think they were displayed at some craft shows, but hey, that said, I am totally open to some sponsorship deals. If you guys have a company and you want me to give you a shout out, just let me know. I, it can be anything. It doesn't have to be just Perler Beads. What about Audible.com? I hear they have great Audibles or uh, Men's Warehouse. Send me some shirts. I'll wear your shirts on my show. You're going to like the way I wear your shirts. I guarantee it. Who are some people who inspire you? That is a great question. People that inspire me usually seem to be folks that really think outside the box, like almost ahead of their time, just trailblazers of their industry, like Rod Serling, P.T. Barnum, Howard Hughes, Harry Houdini. The whole opening, the very first episode of the Pixel Art Show, is a tribute to the show Cosmos, created by the scientist Carl Sagan, who is just one of the best human beings to ever exist. There's Freddie Mercury and the band Queen. They're very inspirational to me for a lot of reasons. I gotta mention my wife, Becky, who is a very big inspiration and my muse and my focus group and cheerleader and sidekick and superhero. Um, man, I could talk about this question all day. Shop Talk's laid back format is very dangerous for a guy that can ramble on like I can. Let's get back on track. Why do you have so many bags of beads? Because I have a huge fear of running out of a color mid-project. Ugh, I don't even like thinking about it. Next question. What was your favorite movie or TV series growing up? I was one of those kids that grew up on like the Disney afternoon and most importantly, Nick at Night. So we're talking DuckTales, Tailspin, Darkwing Duck was my absolute favorite. And then that was followed by classic shows like uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle, uh, Mary Tyler Moore, Dick Van Dyke. I loved Alfred Hitchcock movies, so naturally I loved Alfred Hitchcock Presents. 
I Love Lucy. Oh, uh, Get Smart, because I'm a huge fan of secret agent stuff, so throw all the James Bond movies in there as well. Ghostbusters, Back to the Future, Beetlejuice, all the animated series that followed after that. You know what, just everything we covered in 80s week, just lump that in there too. And well, you know what, this isn't a movie or a TV series, but Calvin and Hobbes had a huge influence on me growing up. I just remembered Fox's Sunday night lineup with The Simpsons, King of the Hill, The X-Files, and I'm rambling. Shop talk, you've done it again. What colors do you use the most and least of? I would say that the colors I use the most of would be black, white, and red, absolutely. The least used colors would be, well, I guess it kind of makes sense that I can't think of them off the top of my head because I don't use them that often. Um, hold on, let me take a look. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to go with magenta. It's a bit too neon for me. There's blueberry cream and hot coral. Nothing wrong with the colors, mind you. They just don't seem to pop up in my work very much. Okay, last question. How do you store your beads? Oh, in bags, like right, right over there. Oh, you wanna see my drawer thing? Okay, let's take a look. I got these bad boys off the container store. I think you can get them off Amazon too. The single drawers here fit a thousand beads pretty comfortably, which comes in handy. I use the bigger drawers on the bottom for colors I use a lot. Okay, and now a glimpse of my upcoming projects. Now, as an artist, I'm naturally always trying to up my game and think outside the box, right? Especially the past few weeks, I've been trying to challenge myself to create some different kinds of works. I'm still planning on making more pop art portraits and classic video games, of course, and you know, all that good stuff that we love, but here's some things that you haven't really seen on this channel before. Here we have a 3D Simpson home, along with the Quickie Mart, pretty fun to make and turned out nicely. Not sure if I'll do many more Springfield locations, just kind of testing the waters. Um, as you can see here with this slightly larger Simpson home, this is just me experimenting with the scale of the house. Just messing around. Oh, I'm starting this new series called Rogue Pixels. The first piece is going to be this heart. Rogue pixels are where images will be made up of pure square perler bead pieces, but of various sizes. Like some of the pixels got too big and some shrunk down. It makes for a really interesting aesthetic. We'll see where that leads. And speaking of leading someplace, I'm not even sure exactly what I'm doing with this, but I think I might be onto something. Check this out. I made a whole bunch of gears interlock, and they really work well together. Not bad. All right, I think that might be all the time we have for Shop Talk today. Guys, as always, thank you so much for tuning in, and a special thanks to all the new subscribers I've had lately. There have been a lot the past couple of weeks. You know, when I started this channel for Perler Bead Tutorials, I was very aware that that's a pretty niche market. I'm just so happy at the rate we're growing together. If I can call all Perler artists, or even just Perler fans, maybe some of you don't even make your own stuff, you just enjoy watching the process, that's great too. Uh, I'm just beyond thrilled to bring people together under a common interest. I look forward to having more fun with you guys, making more videos. Right now, um, I really want to expand the channel. We've got two shows on the channel, Pixel Art Show and Shop Talk, and I've got two more in the works. But I'll save that for later. See you soon, guys.